So once again, my name is Jenny Stonemeyer. I'm the Executive Director at APSI. We are going to be talking about uh, the Emerging Leaders in Employment Services Professional Development Opportunity. Um, for everyone that's on the webinar and everyone that's listening to the recording, we will go through um, a variety of topics, and we'll talk about those in just a second, and then have a chance for some questions. Um, one item to note is that if anybody does have any questions that we don't answer today on the call, I'll be the main point of contact. So um, please email me and I'll put my details in at the end of the, of the session. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, these are the topics that we're going to cover for today. We're going to do an overview of the Emerging Leaders in Employment Services Program, talk about who's an ideal participant, um, how long is the commitment, what's to be expected, how do we sign up, basic logistics kind of questions. Rick McAllister, our partner and subject matter expert in this, is going to cover the learning goals and objectives and um, get into a little bit of the content, not a lot of the content, but from a high level perspective. And then uh, we'll come back and talk about um, more logistics, cost, scheduling, application window, et cetera. And then um, at the end, we'll be able to open up the um, open up the phone. So if people have questions, they can ask those in real time as opposed to needing to type them in. Um, and that should be what we cover today. If there's anything we don't address and you still have questions, we want to make sure you answer them. So we'll give you some contact information at the end. As I said, I'm Jenny Stonemeyer. I'm the executive director at APSI. I've been with APSI for three plus years. Been the executive director for um, almost two. I was the interim executive director for eight months before that, uh, which is way too long to be an interim. Anything, I don't recommend it, but I'm really thrilled to be a part of the organization. Um, and also really thrilled to um, be able to partner with Rick McAllister on this content, and I will let Rick introduce himself and tell you a little bit about him. Certainly, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, as Jay said, I'm Rick McAllister. I'm uh, one of the ODEP subject matter experts. I've been consulting in employment services since, uh, this will date me a bit, but since the mid 80s, and um, actually the early 80s. And I have recently been doing some work around mid-level manager training and coaching as an effective way to start delivering training and employment or employment for services. So this is an extension of that and I'm incredibly excited about this project and even more excited to be working with APSI through this through this effort. Thanks, Rick. So the overview is um, really just what it, what is this concept that we're talking about? Because this isn't a traditional um, training and professional development opportunity. Um, this is much more robust. It is a, a model that incorporates coaching and mentoring and leadership development that takes place in the situation. Um, so the overview is that we are going to be focusing this opportunity on mid-level managers and those are the folks that we consider to be supervising employment support professionals who we are calling frontline staff so mid-level managers are the supervisors of the frontline staff the mid-level managers are the the focus so they are the the agent of uh, the recipient of the professional development the coaching the mentoring um, and and the training which is not to say that frontline staff don't also receive um, training and mentoring, but we're really focusing the intentional efforts on supporting the managers being better managers. The concept is that um, we're dealing with a workforce crisis in the direct support professions and employment support professionals are, are just as much as part of that as anybody else. And, um, we feel that one of the many answers, one of the many components to an answer to the workforce crisis is supporting managers to stay in, not only in their management position, but to be a better support to the frontline staff, because that's where we see the significant turnover. So we will be focusing, um, so uh, mid-level managers will receive 80 hours of training 
training, coaching, and mentoring over a 12-month period. And those mid-level managers will be supporting the frontline staff, the rising stars. And we would like to see a certain uh, three to five frontline staff per mid-level manager in this work. So, um, and those frontline staff will receive 40 hours of training and mentoring over that same 12-month period. So who are our ideal candidates? Um, Mid-level managers, again, are the emerging leaders. They're the supervising staff, hopefully a minimum of five. We understand that that's not always possible, so three to five is kind of the range. Um, we would like to see them have a bachelor's degree, but we also recognize that education isn't the only the only criteria for being an effective manager, so we would like to see either a bachelor's degree or some combination of education and experience. And we also want to be able to see a commitment to the work. Um, the frontline staff, I'm just going to move down that column, the frontline staff, the rising stars, we are looking at the ideal candidate is those who are providing employment support with individuals with disabilities and those who are passionate about the work, who show some level of commitment, interest, curiosity, all of those kind of factors of good staff, all of those things that we say you, you know it when you see it. Um, but those are the folks that we're looking for to participate. So once they get involved in the process, what is it that they're going to receive? We're asking for a 12-month commitment from both. And during that time, um, as I said, mid-level managers are going to receive 80 hours of training, coaching, and mentoring. Frontline staff will receive 40 hours of training and mentoring. That coaching component is, is not included in the frontline staff because that's the focus of, for the manager. Um, both mid-level managers and frontline staff will be eligible to sit for the CESP, Certified Employment Support Professional Exam, and they'll be eligible to sit for it at no cost upon completion of the 12-month program. So we hope that there's a little bit of an incentive there at the end. Um, we can't guarantee eligibility, but we feel that participation in this program would certainly um, be a significant step towards eligibility for the exam. Um, so that's that's what we're what we're headed towards. Rick is going to talk about some of the learning goals and objectives now. Certainly, as we're um, you know we're always looking to provide high quality services. The purpose of this program is to facilitate some consistency and some continuity in that process. We're really going to focus on um, a combination of the basics of high quality best practice, as well as some um, ability to look at ourselves, our processes, our environment, and our culture to see if we can't build a foundation of sustainability. We want to build into our process um, the ability to look at continuously seeking improvement. So we'll build in some of the basics of continuous process improvement, and we'll make sure that we're in fact looking at whether our operations are lean, sustainable, consistent. We also wanna make sure that we're working with our team members, and that's why we've done this as a partnership between the frontline managers and the staff, we really want to make sure that we're keeping people engaged, informed, and empowered. And we really want to make sure that the techniques that we're doing um, support that and that each of us has skills and abilities to, to engage. We're also trying to build the next generation of leaders. In our field, we, we have spits and spurts of where we're developing people based on some federal funding. And we really want to try to build some continuity between the different generations and the ability to look at leadership going into the future around employment services. We'll look at um, the organization's base of technical capacity. We'll look at your organizational structure. We'll help you think about the day-to-day -day design, the day-to-day -day management, the allocation of resources. And we'll also help you become a member of a cohort uh, or, or a community of support for learning and change. As people participate in this program, they'll join a grow, hopefully an ever-growing community of people that have gone through this and are supportive of each other 
and build a network of, of peers and colleagues who they can count on. Jenny, if you'd please switch the slide. Jenny? I was trying to answer questions and got oh, uh, tangled up with myself. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. That's all right. So we, when we talked about high quality service, what we were looking at is, of course, the things that we all know, which is focusing on um, consumer driven services, um, customer support, effective customer service. We want to make sure that we build in the elements of, um, you know, that are important to any organization. We have quality control. We look at cost control. We um, are always trying to innovate. We try to build innovation with the resources that we have available. We'll talk about metrics and evaluation and make sure that when we're making decisions, they're data-driven decisions. They're, they're, de they're decisions that we're making based on the information that we have and how to do that and when to do that and where to do that. We're going to look at making sure that there's a continuity of delivery of best practices and procedures. We're going to implement some tools. We're going to provide you some tools that help do that. We're going to look at core competencies and core structures. We're going to continually be looking at mechanisms to improve the field and move the needle as we talk about on providing the best quality supports and helping people obtain employment. Jenny, would you please turn the slide? Um, I'm just going to read this, and I, I try not to read slides very often, but I really want to read this slide to you because I think this is important. Pierre Sankey talks about a learning organization. And when I think about a learning organization as we're doing this project, I think about a learning organization being twofold. One, it being your organization as you participate in this, but two, our field. And organizations where people continually expand the capacity to create the results they truly desire where new and expansive patterns of thinking are nurtured, where collective aspirations are is set free, collective aspiration is set free, and where people are continually learning to see the whole together. That's really the community that we're talking about trying to build by the people who participate in this, this um, project, what we're calling the emerging leaders. Next slide, please. So in doing that, we've decided to focus on mid-level management. There's a lot of research out there and, and all of you can read that and a lot of papers and a lot of work being done in the business community and I've recently been doing a lot of work in healthcare. The reality is that the mid-level managers are where we need to put our effort. Everything that they touch, is, everything they touch either has a trickle down or a trickle up effect on the staff and the quality and consistency of the services provided to the people that we're, we're seeking to support. You know, the managers become the essence or the element of stability and continuity in an organization. So that's why we've chosen to target those folks as this project. And we're trying to do it in a way where we're not treating it as a one-time training program. Training and development is not going to be a one-time effort. We're really looking at building a process where we talk about information, we share information, and we customize the support to each of you relative to your environment and relative to your needs and abilities as you're growing and bringing that through. We also want to make sure, though, that we incorporate the right kind of tools and approaches so that we are systematically using best practice. So we are going to introduce competencies. We're going to introduce um, measurement tools. And we're going to make sure you're comfortable with them. You know how to read them, you know how to do them, and you know how to interpret them. Next slide, please. And these tools that I've talked about are going to be employment services core competencies. Core competencies for those direct service staff, people that we're calling the, the rising stars. We want to make sure that they're given competencies that they can understand and that we provide a training mechanism for them to do it. We're going to talk about building standard operating procedures and practices for the way that we deliver the services and the way that staff implement those, those competencies. We're going to provide you with training curricula and develop training guides for you as managers to support your staff as you participate in the process. We're also going to make sure that we're looking at tools that your staff are consistently using to, to implement best practice. So we're going to make sure that we're giving them tools 
and technology and techniques that allow them to be most effective when they're going out procuring employment opportunities and supporting people within those employment opportunities. In doing that, we're also going to integrate, and this is what makes this program a little bit unique, we're going to integrate management core competencies for you in the development of those relative to and integrated into the delivery of employment services. So we're going to not just talk about how to manage, we're going to talk about how to manage employment service programs and employment service staff. And then we're going to use some very generic but very important core competencies around leadership and development. And when I talk about leadership, I'm not just talking about leadership of the staff you supervise. I'm also talking about leadership with our colleagues, leadership in the field, leadership in the, you know, the community, leadership in the uh, nationally as we start trying to build you as emerging leaders and we start trying to build a cadre of people that are that are stepping up and becoming the next generation of a very important group of people that that support people in finding employment. Next slide please. So why why we're doing the the technique the way we're doing it with the coaching and the mentoring is that each each person who participates in this process is going to be a very different place um, relative to their training, their experience, and their personal development as to where they stand in employment services, where they stand in management, and where they stand in their leadership skills and abilities. So we will be developing a unique model of customized coaching for each of the what we're calling the emerging leaders. Each person will face unique challenges in their work and their environment and their culture. And so there is no one size that fits all. We really want to try to make sure that we help you implement. We've seen a lot over the years. I've been doing this training for a long time. I've been doing it, you know, if some of you did your math, I've been doing it close to 30 or 40 years. And the reality is that um, I've seen people come to trainings, spend time at trainings, go back from their trainings and struggle with implementing it or not being able to implement it at all or not having the support and the sustainability within their their tools or their organization to support that. So this way we're trying to take a little bit different approach. I also would like to see less turnover. I've gone and done training programs and we'll do three sessions over the course of 90 days or three months. And sometimes by the second or third training session, we don't have the same people there. We're starting over. We're, we're um, revisiting information um, that probably is, is very basic for the people who've been coming and isn't going to help the people that haven't got the whole package to really gain and make, make strides in, in making a change in their field or change in their organization. So professional development, we're not treating it as a course. Professional development is a process. So what we're doing is building the foundation for that process for each of the people that participate in this, both the emerging leaders and the rising stars. You know, we want, we realize, and, and the data and literature, again, throughout the field of management tells us that effective leadership and management skills require both knowledge and practice. So what we're going to do is provide you some basic information. We're going to do selective reading. We're going to talk in small groups. We're going to talk individually. And we're going to customize a, a training program for you to practice the information that, that we provide and have a chance to provide feedback on it, to modify it, to make it work for you as a participant. Next slide, please. So now that we've sold you on what the content is and how this is different from your average training or professional development opportunity, um, we want to answer the sort of the million dollar question, which is what does this cost? Um, this is a training opportunity that we um, feel really strongly in, in terms of commitment and in terms of quality and um, uniqueness of opportunity. And it's also an incredibly intensive um, amount of training. 
So as we said, the mid-level managers will receive 80 hours of training over the 12 months. And the cost for their participation in that, and this is materials and um, the training time and the mentoring coaching time, is $5,000 for the 12 months. If you break it down by an hourly rate, it's, um, I'm going to do the math again because I always get numbers. I can't hold them in my head. $62.50 an hour. So it's, it's pretty commensurate with what you might expect for an hourly rate for training. Frontline staff, which is that manager position, um, ideally we said there's a five. We, we wanted to see five frontline staff um, who were in a, a direct supervision, who were under the direct supervision of the mid-level managers, but we know that five isn't always a, a perfect number. So if you have one to three staff members who are with the managers, um, it's $2,500 for one to three. So if you have three, it's $2,500. If you have um, for the group of three. Three to five staff members is $3,500 per manager. So um, that's not, not per frontline staff, but per manager. So we see this as being sort of a tree perspective, if you wanted to think of it visually, that for every manager, there would be three to five um, frontline staff under, under them. The application window will be opening on Monday, March 2nd, and um, I will email you the link to the application window when um, we send out the link to the recording of this that will also have, um, that will also have the um, slide deck as well. Um, so, Rick, I'm going to start to read. Folks have started to put some questions into the chat box. That's kind of where we are at this point in the game. Um, so, I will read the questions out, Rick, and if you want to help me answer them, um, that would be helpful. Um, all right, the first question is from Star. The question is, are any of the trainings specific to disability for job coaches? Uh, you mean job coaches, I'm assuming that means co job coaches specializing in certain disabilities or su uh, certain support groups that they provide that have a uh, characteristic of a disability. No, it's not going to target that, but it certainly would be covered in the individual side of the manager training and the training that would be provided to that group. So, you know, if you're if you have a specialty population you're providing support into, we certainly would modify the the trainings where appropriate and when necessary to address those unique needs. There's another question that says, for small companies that can only afford to send um, just the mid-level manager or just one or two staff, is that possible? Uh, that would be up to you, Wendy, but I believe we would certainly be open to that. Okay. I I agree that I, I think that it would be, um, we would certainly feel um, more open to that if it was just the mid-level manager. Um, because that's that's really the the focus of of the training and the and all of the levels of support. Um, I think if it was just the frontline staff, we would certainly be willing to have a conversation about that um, and and figure out how that could work to everyone's benefit. Um, but again, it, it's a, it's just about having a conversation. As Rick said, this isn't a we know that one size doesn't fit all, and that also means that the model that we've proposed doesn't necessarily fit what every, what every possible participant needs and, and wants. So um, Angela Dean asked, if you have three staff exactly, what would that cost be? If you have three staff um, and one of those is a manager and two of those are frontline staff, that cost would be $7,500 for the 12 months. If you had three frontline staff and all three of them were 
um, I'm sorry, if you had three frontline, if you had three staff and all three of them were frontline staff, um, that would get back to that previous question and, and we would want to have a conversation about that. Um, so Angela, I'm not, not sure quite what your distribution of, of folks was. Um, there's another question of, do the mid-level managers and the frontline staff go together as a package? Rick, do you want to answer that? Sure. There are times when they are a package, yes. When we do the front the front end training, the, the first two days of training, we certainly would want them to come as a package. Um, and then after that, there's a one-day additional training of the uh, at the front end for just the uh, emerging leaders, the middle-level managers. And then when we do the teleconferences, we would like them to all be together. So there's a series of two-hour teleconferences that happen throughout the year. Sometimes they're one hour in, in a couple of the scenarios. But we would want them to all participate in those online conferences. But away from your agency, the only the only time that they would be together away from your agency would be a two-day period at the very front end. So, Rick, there are other questions about how often is the training. I wonder if you want to talk through some of those logistics. Sure. Well, how often is the training? What we will do is there will be a front-end training once we have a cohort of approximately 10 people within a region, we will do the front-end training. And then the training will happen monthly um, at some point. And for each group, we will work with you on when is the best time within the month, morning, afternoon. Um, you know, we'll try to figure out what's best for you and your organization and we'll provide that. And then each of the managers, when they're providing the mentoring and coaching, will have at least an hour a month that's available. Um, it sometimes is more because as we're developing and working with some folks, they find it necessary to spend more time and receive a bit more coaching or they choose to, in which case we'll work around that. But those schedules are very flexible based on the person. So what we do is we develop a, an individualized development plan for that person and then we set a schedule of time when they get their mentoring and coaching. And then we have some times when there's an opportunity if there's something that's emergent for them to call in. The trainings for the direct line staff will be provided, again, once a month. And we will work with the small cohorts to determine the best time of day and the best days of the week to provide those trainings. So there was a question about um, if if there is a the ten teams um, if that those ten teams are selected then that would be it across the country. Rick, I wonder if you wanted to talk about our our thoughts for enrollment periods. Sure. No, we're we're looking at ten people within a geographic catchment area so we can reasonably bring them together. That's the magic ten number. You know, so we'd like 10 emerging leaders within a couple of hundred miles of each other so that as we did the training um, and we did the on-site support, there would be some, you know, reasonableness about the logistics. But no, this is not limited to 10 people total. We really think that, you know, during the first pass, the first time that we close this, we could do as many as 30 people, three, three groups or three cohorts um, around the country. And then within two months later, we could do another three cohorts. After 60, within a year, we have to really start looking at our numbers. But if the demand was really pent and we were, we were trying to meet that demand, we do have some other options to provide more opportunities. So I would not feel that the 10 was a limiting factor. So some other questions about those kind of logistics. I just wanted to say that um, we have barely begun marketing this opportunity and the response has been overwhelming. Um, I've sent out two emails and that's it. Um, and so we expect that the demand for this is going to be um, pretty high, um, even though we recognize that it's, it's a, a significant investment um, and we are committed to meeting that demand. So as Rick said, we've, we've gotten sort of these ideal kind of scenarios uh, in in just our thinking and, and our response to um, what we think might happen, but we are committed to being responsive. So um, 
I don't, I don't want anyone to feel like this is a one-time opportunity. There, there is some urgency to it. We do really want to get started and, and start to move forward. But um, if the timing of this application window doesn't work for everyone, then we would, there will be others. So um, don't worry about that. Um, there is a question about um, for staff already who are CESPs, who hold the CESP credentials, with the training count for recertification? Um, Phil, that's an excellent question. Um, CESP does not currently offer um, pre-approved uh, trainings for recertification hours. However, um, we will be going through the process of taking the curriculum and doing a crosswalk with the CESP domains. And um, I feel confident that a fair amount of it will count towards certification, but I can't tell you um, what that number is. So I, I'm sorry for the sort of half answer, but um, yes, but I don't know specifically. Um, Can I comment on that a little bit, Jenny? Yes. Yeah, please. and one of the reasons for that is one of the reasons that's important to understand is because, you know, as we're customizing to your organization, we're trying to, you know, bridge a gap between standardized training, which we want to make sure that we're consistent with and support, but we also want to be able to customize it to meet your needs and, and the functional day to day activity. So that's important. And, and for the previous question, I also did want to make one more comment about. Our, our ability to flex, be flexible for you. The purpose of this training is to build emerging leaders. And so we want to make sure that we're meeting your needs and that we're not cutting out your opportunities for this. So, so please talk to us. I mean, again, the purpose of this is for you not to have a training program that we're selling. It's just the opposite of that. So please talk to us if you're having concerns with flexibility or, con or concerns with, you know, how how we can best customize it to meet your needs. There's uh, another question that says, how much of the focus would be in providing management programs to support youth who are transitioning to work? Well, I think that, again, supporting people that are going into work and you transitioning into work is is a part of our field and part of the employment process. So. I think that if we're developing leaders who can provide employment supports, that would certainly be some of the employment supports that they would want to be proficient in. And, and again, for that organization, that might be what they focus their their organizational structure on. But at the end of the day, if we're preparing people for employment, we should be doing the same thing if we're helping people get employment. So there should be a significant amount of overlap. Um, so there's a question from Jill that says, where is the front end training and how does that cost? Um, the training locations, as, as Rick mentioned earlier, um, the training locations are going to be determined once we see applications because we want to uh, consolidate as, as much as possible to create not only um, locational efficiency for the folks participating, but also to reduce the, the travel um, expenses for the trainers. Um, and the, the costs are uh, the costs that are, there isn't a, um, there isn't an a la carte option to this. Um, the cost is for the 12 months of training, and that's all inclusive of content and materials and um, time and, and those those, it's, so it's all one price. There's a question for about how much would it cost for two mid-level managers? The price is $5,000 per manager. So two mid-level managers would be $10,000. Um, Can I just talk to that a little bit, Jenny? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, when, when you look at an upfront number of that, it seems like a bit, but the number of contact hours and the coaching hours um, you know, there's a significant value that's, that's um, being given, and if we were to go out to an outside consulting or direct training program, this really would be very inexpensive relative to that. So I, I really would like to have people understand, again, the purpose of this is not to sell the training. It's really to change the needle and, and develop a cadre of emerging leaders, but we do have to cover the cost. 
and you know, I think that this is where we've sort of drawn the line at to what the, you know, the covering the cost would be. Right. So the hourly rate is equivalent to $62 an hour per training, per hour of training. Um, Rick, there's a question that says, will there be a curriculum syllabus that would explain what is being offered? There will be provided to the people that are selected. We're not sending it out just as a generic manual for the field. And last question that I have written in the question box is, will the trainings be completed online or at a specific training site? A combination of both. We'll do the initial upfront trainings um, at, a, at a local site as local as possible. And then there will be, the vast majority of it will be provided um, through Skype or Zoom. Great. Um, those are all the questions that we've got written into the box. Um, for anybody who has any follow-up questions, we will um, be sending out uh, not only the recording and this slide deck, but I'll add some contact information to the last slide so um, everyone can see. Um, oh wait. There's more questions. Hold on. <laughs> so are we working with specific organizations to provide training for all of their um, employment staff? Um, that's certainly an opportunity, um, but we don't currently have uh, any, any of those um, specific organizations committed to this, um, but if it certainly is an opportunity. Um, are there any funding or grant options that you can recommend to help organizations pay for the training? Um, Rick, do you have thoughts on that? I, I don't have direct grants, but I think that if you were to talk to your, you know, your state support agencies and your funding agencies, you know, the again, the value for the relative dollars here is, is pretty high. So I think you might find that some of those organizations might be committed to providing this training. When I was providing day training, you know, and do provide day training, you know, the cost per hour is significantly higher than, than this program. And this is customized and individualized. So I think that if you were to looking for support, your funding sources, your funding agents may be, may be open to discussing that with you. But I can't guarantee that. And another question of will there be any additional cost for on-site training, um, no, the training is, it's an all-inclusive price. Um, and there are, um, when he was saying, do you have any thoughts on entities that might be interested in providing funding for agencies to secure the training? Um, I think, as Rick mentioned, there's there are lots of foundations. Um, that would be interested. I think that uh, state DD councils would be very, very interested. Um, I also, um, I think that there are local community foundations um, that would be very interested in, in supporting staff development and staff training. Um, but those are all very specific to your, your context. Um, one last question, Rick. Rick asked, what support is available post the completion of the 12 months, which is a great question. Sure. Um, at the end of the 12 months, you would certainly be in a, um, a, a cadre, a group of people that would be in contact, and we'd facilitate that contact. Um, I think as a group, we'll probably determine what exactly that is, whether it's monthly or bi-monthly or a couple times a year. And I think that Jenny's committed to at uh, the APSI conferences to at least have a session that, that those people can kind of congregate or call into. Um, but the other part of it too is that, you know, if at the end of a year, if somebody was saying that, you know, I really valued it and I want to do it more, um, you know, we certainly can talk about customizing it for that group or that individual beyond that. Um, and we can certainly look at those opportunities because again, as I said earlier, each person is going to be at a very different place. And so if, if they're feeling like that they would like more, 
I personally have a number of people that are, um, you know, receiving ongoing coaching and development after I've done this with some organizations. And in some cases, they're paying for it individually. Um, some places, the organizations are doing it. And in some cases, we've just agreed to keep some of the mentoring going because it seems to be best for that person in the field. So I think all of those opportunities are, are things that we'd want to keep on the table. There's a follow-up question to that, which is, will the graduates, the, the folks who've been through the training, be used as mentors in for future classes? There's a high probability that that could happen. It's not going to be a guarantee, but there are, you know, as emerging leaders, we certainly would want to de develop a cadre of people that could do some of the work. Now, whether it's coaching or mentoring other leaders would depend on the person, but certainly doing more training. I mean, we're really trying to build a a bunch of local and organizational subject matter experts. So there certainly should be some opportunities for that. And a final question of, um, will the trainers be the two of you or additional subject matter experts? Um, Molly, I am not a subject matter expert in employment support. Uh, I'm an executive director of a membership association. So I will not be providing any of the training. Uh, Rick will be providing training, and based on demand for the training, we will be um, we will be identifying other subject matter experts that meet a very very specific set of criteria. So um, Rick is is the the first step, and then um, we will find others. Um, what is the background of the current mentors? Um, Rick, do you want to answer that? Sure. Yeah. The background of the current mentors or mentees. I'm, I'm going to assume, I'm assuming you say mentor, which would be me. Mentor. Um, yep. Yeah. The mentor would be me. Um, I, as I said, I've been in the field for, since the mid eighties, I've been a uh, director of support employment systems change projects. Um, I've been, um, executive director. I've been managers. I do coaching, development, and training. I've done hundreds, maybe thousands of sessions of management and leadership coaching and training. Um, I've presently, actively, for the past five, six years, been focusing on leadership, mid-level manager development and employment services. Um, so this is the work that, that you know I find to be very effective, and the results of it have, have been very effective. So... That's my background. Um, like I said, I've been in employment services for a long time. I've been a subject matter expert for ODEP for five, four or five years. I don't remember exactly. Um, I've been a national presenter for employment service organizations. Um, you know, as I'm looking at some of the names here, I know that some of the people on here, you know, know me. I've done training around the country. I've done them for the regional RCEPs, the DD councils, um, national conferences. So that's that's the background that I have. Um, but specifically, my interest is in mentoring and coaching mid-level managers in employment services. And that, I believe, is the end of the questions. <laughs> so um, thank you to everybody for participating today um, in the call. Thanks for your questions. Um, please uh, look for not only the application uh, link, um, but also an email to, from us for the app that will include the application link, the recording of this webinar, and the slide deck that we have that Rick and I have been um, speaking from today. So uh, thank you very much, and more to come. And we hope to be in conversation with you all soon. Thank you. It's been nice.